Top 10 signs you're an early childhood educator. If you can answer yes to any of these, you're in the right room. You're at the right conference, okay? So here we go. Number 10, you find yourself humming the wheels on the bus in the shower. Do you do that? I know, it's bad. One time, this is true, when I was teaching, I was standing at the stove stirring something, on, at a, stirring a pot or something or other, and I looked down and I noticed that I was being a teapot. That's true. And I thought, I need to take a vacation. Like, you know, the boundary line just got crossed because I need to keep the teapots at work and, you know, like be a grown-up, whatever that means, you know, here. Um, so, yeah. All right. Judging by your laughter, you can relate to that one. Number nine, every time you turn around, someone tells you that you have a piece of glitter on your face. Right? So I have these big these big eyebrows and it tends to, the glitter used to tend to get stuck, you know, in my eyebrows. And then afterwards I'd be out like with other grown-ups and they would look at me funny, you know, and, and by the way, sir, are you the only other gentleman in the room? Is there any other men in the room besides he and I? All right, all right. Stay right there. Protect me. All right. But the thing is, people look at us extra funny when you walk around with glitter in, the, in your eyebrow. Because for you women, it, you know, there's a lot of makeup now that's got the glitter in it, and it's like maybe you're doing a Beyonce thing or something, and so, okay, there's some glitter. But for us, it's like, is he a drag queen? Or like, what does he do for a living? Oh, there's another gentleman back there. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, you know, people are just not sure, like, why does that guy have glitter in his hair? Or one time I went to a party, way more than one time, but I went to a party and someone very uncomfortably said something like, um, did you know that your forearm is purple? <laughs> you know? And I said, that's because I'm an early childhood professional, early childhood power. <laughs> that means I did my job right. Right? If you don't end your day covered in something, like, like a body fluid <laughs> or paint or glue or something, you did not do your job right. That's, that's my barometer, right? So I, I, in my career, I've, I've traveled around and gone to a lot of different centers and I've seen enough that I can kind of know pretty quickly like when I'm in the room of a good early childhood professional and when I'm not. Um, and so I'm not going to make eye contact with anyone in this room if you're the person I'm about to describe, but you know who you are. Um, so one of my first clues is like, you know, when someone's teaching young children and she's got on the full makeup and the perfect hair, you know, like at the end of the day. Do you know what I'm saying? Or here's the, here's the big giveaway, acrylic nails. You did not spend the day making Play-Doh with those nails. Don't even try to tell me that. Okay? And here's the biggest one of all, right? And, and really, if you do this, I, don't tell me because I will smack you. I will. Who, who can really do early childhood in heels? That's all I'm saying. When I walk in, yes, the woman who is avoiding looking at me over here and has her hand in her face, apparently, she thinks she can do early childhood. All I'm saying is, if you re to do early childhood well, you've got to be getting down and getting up and getting down and getting up. And if you've got on those high heels, I I'm just, I've never worn high heels, but I'm just not really sure how you'd be capable of really doing that um, well. That's all I'm saying. So when I see those heels, I'm like, you're a nice person, go find another profession. <laughs> all right. Number eight, every time your spouse or partner acts like a jerk, you have to curb the urge to put them in a timeout. I know, I know. But I do want to mention this. Timeouts are so last millennium, okay? So if that's news to you, newsflash, we don't do timeouts anymore. If that's news to you, go educate yourself about other forms of guidance and discipline with young children, because we do not do timeouts anymore. That's a whole other workshop, and we're not going to get into it now, because now we're just telling some jokes. I'm just saying, ixnay on the I'm out days. That's all I'm saying. All right. 
Number seven, you cough into your elbow. <coughs> mm -hmm. Number six, you continually wear out the knees of your pants from being on the floor so much. Number five, some of your most prized jewelry is made of pipe cleaners. Which coincidentally is all we can afford on our salaries, as it turns out. And we get them for free from these children, right? With the big plastic beads. I have some from like 20 years ago. I have no clue who made them. They probably already have children of their own by now. And yet you just, you look at them and you, oh, I can't throw this away. Someone who loved me made this for me. Number four, my personal favorite one, and don't you even dare try to lie and say this is not true about you, because it so is. You have mastered the art of passing gas and announcing, someone's got a poopy diaper. Okay. Okay. Now notice the people you work with who are just laughing particularly hard because they have just outed themselves. It was them. Now you know the truth. It was not the kids. It was them. Okay, but here's the thing. No one in this room got into this profession for the high salary. Right? So when you find a perk that's yours, embrace it. Because we don't get much in this world. And this one is ours. Okay? Lawyers don't get this one. Accountants do not get this one. They can't blame it on their secretaries. This is ours. It's what little we have in this world. So please, um, let it rip and blame it on the kids. That's all I'm saying. All right. All right. <laughs> but true. Crazy, but true. All right. Number three. You have the strange need to stockpile newspapers, baby food jars, frozen dinner trays, and toilet paper tubes. And you have like a million of them, but you're afraid if you just get rid of any, maybe next week we're going to need them for a project, you know? And like some of them are older than the kids you work with. You know, but you're afraid to get rid of them and they kind of smell, you know? Okay, well, anyway, that's, that wasn't my classroom. All right. Number two. You know the names of every X-Man, Muppet, Wiggle, Power Ranger, Car, Webkin, Pirate, Spider-Man, Batman, and Iron Man villain, Yo Gabba Gabba character, Latina Explorer, and her cousin Diego. Mm-hmm. I am so socially unacceptable at grown-up parties. You know, if they want to talk about, like, political situations, I can't follow it very well. But if they want to talk about SpongeBob, I'm right there. <laughs> then I can have an extended conversation with you about are you pro-Patrick or anti-Patrick. All right, and the number one sign, give me a drum roll on your laps or on the pews or something. Ooh, good following directions, early childhood people. Right. The number one sign you are an early childhood professional. They know you by name at the 99 cent store. Mm -hmm. Which also goes to prove that many of us early childhood folks are both cheap and not smart. Right? Because if you got $10, which by the way your school didn't give you, it's out of your own pocket, but you got to, am I right? Can I get an amen? We're in a, we're in a chapel. Thank you. Um, you go to the 99 cent store and you spend it on 10 things that are going to break in a day instead of on one thing that's going to last. Right? I mean, I did it. Maybe I'm the only stupid one, but that's what I used to always do. And then it's like I never learned from that lesson. I'm never going to do this again. And then I'd find myself back in the, I was like a 99 cent store addict, you know? Or I'd go into the hardware store or like the pet supply store and I'd be like, you could paint with this. You know, you'd like find some weird thing and you'd be like, oh yeah, I could put this in my art center. And who knows what it was intended for originally, but it always becomes something to paint with, at least in my classroom. <laughs>